Mechtronic systems are present everywhere today, from aircraft flight control and navigation systems, to drones, to car airbag safety systems, to robots, to smart home appliances, and even some toys are considered to be mechatronic systems. These systems are all familiar to us, but what exactly is mechatronics? My name is Dr. Maddie Babayazel, and this is the first lesson on the series of lessons of fundamentals of mechatronics. But before you continue, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on a lesson. Also, let's help other people to get access to robotics and mechatronics lessons by sharing this lesson with them. I sincerely thank you for your attention, and without further ado, let's get started. Mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, civil engineering, and chemical engineering were the primary engineering disciplines of the 20th century. But a breakthrough in semiconductor electronics and the use of integrated circuits and computers changed the boundaries of traditional engineering disciplines. Mechatronics is a field of study that combines electronics and mechanical components with modern controls and microprocessors. As a matter of fact, every, uh, every newly designed engineering product can be considered to be a mechatronic system. The word mechatronics was coined in Japan in the 1960s, spread through Europe, and then eventually took off in the United States. A mechatronic system is sometimes called a smart device because it combines logic, computation, and feedback into a very sophisticated and complex design to simulate human uh, thinking process. Now the question is, what exactly do mechatronics engineers do? Mechatronic system engineers design and select analog and digital circuits, microprocessor-based components, mechanical devices, sensors, actuators, and controls so that the final product meets a specified goal. For example, for this mobile robot, it can be programmed to follow a specified path. Let's now take a look at the main components of a mechatronic system. This figure shows the main components of a mechatronic system. Motion or action is produced by actuators. Sensors detect the state of system parameters, inputs and outputs. For example, a sensor can measure the position or velocity of the motor. This signal is then given to the control system after conditioning. The conditioning and interfacing circuits connect the control circuits with the input-output devices. The control system inputs the control signal and the actuator motion can be controlled accordingly. The user interface enables manual inputs and provides graphical displays or visual feedback. The diagram was intended to convey the overall idea of the main components of a mechatronic system. We'll examine each component with lots of practical examples in greater detail at the coming lessons. But for now, just get a visual understanding of how these components are related to each other in a mechatronic system. A fundamental part of many mechatronic systems is the measurement system. Let's see what the elements of a measurement system are. This figure shows the elements of a measurement system. Generally, a transducer is a sensing element that converts a physical input into an output, which, which is usually a voltage. The signal processor performs filtering, amplification, or other signal conditioning on the transducer output. A recorder is an instrument, a computer, or an output device that stores or displays sensor data for monitoring or subsequent analysis. The term sensor refers either to the transducer or the combination of the transducer and the signal processor. Let's now see an example of a mechatronic system with all the components that we discussed. A robot vacuum cleaner is an autonomous machine that automatically maneuvers itself around the room to clean it. A spinning brush and a vacuum are used to pick up dirt, as with a conventional cleaner. The two large wheels are driven independently by two separate electric motors. It can also have other actuators like a suction motor, side brush motor, or brush roll motor. 
A front onboard sensor enable the robot vacuum cleaner to move autonomously, detecting dirt, avoiding obstacles, and avoiding things like tassels on rocks and telephone cords. Sensors can detect walls and obstacles, then send signals to the control unit so the robotic vacuum cleaner slows down or changes direction. Furthermore, stairs and deep drops uh, can be detected by sensors under the robot and prevent catastrophic events. Many new versions of autonomous robotic vacuum cleaners use VSLAM or Vision uh, Simultaneous Localization and Mapping to map rooms using onboard cameras to gradually gain a picture of where the cleaner goes and where it has been cleaning, leading to a more straight line cleaning than random cleaning. Therefore, a robotic vacuum cleaner can be considered a mechatronic system with all the components that we discussed in this lesson. Are there any mechatronic systems that you are familiar with? Can you identify their different components that we discussed in this lesson? If so, please share your answer with us and with other mechatronic family in the comment section. That's going to wrap up today's lesson. I hope that you have a good understanding of the definition of mechatronics. From next lesson, we will start with fundamentals of mechatronics. Stay tuned. See you in the next lesson. Bye.